my great aspiration, my greatest ambition is to be so good. Now, in that way, I'm tiresome, as I, I suppose, to live with, because I want to be a fantastic human being. Basically, people are afraid to die. So they clutch to something which they think will preserve their lives. So they try to guarantee happiness to themselves by shunting dirt and misery off on someone else. That's Sterling Brown. Uh, Sterling Brown's poem, The Strong Man. People feel, if I can keep them out of this building, them off this street, them out of this employment line. I live a little longer. They don't think it consciously, but that is fundamental. People are afraid to be pried loose from their ignorance because they know their ignorance so well, they know it better than they know their body odors. And if you say, come on, give me up your, give up your ignorance, they get into that terrible position, terrifying, position which Shakespeare talks about at the end of the soliloquy, Hamlet soliloquy. They'd rather bear the ills they have than fly to others that they know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all. So they are cowardly. I mentioned courage and I would, I would like to say something else about that. Finding courage in the leaders and in you who will become leaders. Uh, courage is the most impo important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. You see, you can't be consistently kind or fair or humane or generous. Not without courage because if you don't have it, sooner or later you'll stop and say, ah, the threat is too much, the, the difficulty is too, too high, the, the challenge is, is too great. You know, I believe that self-love is very important. If you read my work, you know I'm always talking about loving oneself. I never trust anybody who tells me he or she loves me if the person doesn't love herself or himself. There's an African saying which is, be careful when a naked person offers you a shirt. I mean, if he had something, he'd cover himself first, right? So I like to look at self-love. It is very important that it comes from within, that you have a sense of yourself, so that when you walk into an office, you don't go alone. Bring your people with you. Bring everybody who has loved you with you. Say, Grandma, come on, let's go. Great Grandpa, you've been dead all this time. Come on, let's go. I have to go in here and, and have an interview. Come on, Auntie. Come on, my friends. Come, let's go. And when you walk in, people don't know what it is about you. They can't take their eyes off you. You may not be cute in the given sense. You may not be fly fashion model size in that particular sense. You may not be any of those things, but they can't take their eyes off you. And they say of you uh, in, a, in this incredible way, which I don't understand. They say, I don't know, but she has charisma. You know, what you have is all those people around you. So think of that. Anytime you have anything to do, bring everybody with you that you can remember who has loved you. And then you have that sense of having been paid for. And when you walk in, people will say, now, I think you're overqualified. Yes, this, you, you will have that, but you'd have that anyway. How do I think the world would be if 1% of the world's population was complaint free? Einstein said no genius has ever used more than 18% of the brain. But today's geophysicists say 
glutinous as it means more than 10% of the brain. The majority of us mumble and get around with 5, 6, 7%. If we've been able to stay alive at all, alive and future thinking, alive and having enough courage to care for each other, enough courage to love, and know that we're probably 1% free. I mean, that's 1% one, 1 of 60 million free of, uh, of complaints. Imagine, who would we be? Who would we be if we were 1% of 600 million, 6 billion? What would happen? I tell you one thing, I think war would be laughed out of the room. I think the very word, if somebody said war, Another person would say, you mean, am I supposed to kill somebody because he doesn't agree with me? I don't think so. Just imagine. People would speak kinder, more kindly to each other. Courtesy would be in, invited back into the living room, into the bedroom, into the children's room, into the kitchen. If 1% of our world was complaint free. We would care more about the children and realize that every child is our child. The black one and the white one, the pretty one and the plain one, the Asian and the Muslim, the Japanese and the Jewish, everyone is our child. If we were just 1% free of complaint, imagine that we would stop blaming other people for our mistakes <laughs> and hating them because they caused the mistake in our minds. Just imagine if we laugh more frequently, if we had the unmitigated courage to touch each other. It would be a, just the beginning of paradise, you know.